today I have a behemoth to look at. It's Cromlex Norzilla. Okay, first things first. The body is a block of resin. These two little holes. If you want to have um, magnets in there so that you can remove the howdah top easily and for transportation or storage or maybe just don't want to use it that particular week. Um, because this is all textured and detailed anyway, so it doesn't have to be situated there. So that's a nice touch. I like that. As we can see, beautiful texture on the skin, smoothing out to the softer, fluffier underbelly of the Nozilla. Um, the armor plating almost has a texture like um, possibly Tyranid uh, sort of armor plate feel, although it could easily be painted up as metal as well. I like the idea that they found this beast and uh, supplemented its own hide with chunks from another creature, or perhaps they have just bolted metal shards straight onto its own armor pieces. It's entirely up to you how you decide to paint it. Nice detail and texture throughout. Good, chunky orc style of uh, machinery, I suppose. We've got corrugated sheets. We've got tread plate, crow's feet, all sorts. With big hefty bolts and big slabs of metal screwed and welded and blocked into them. There is a detailed collar running all the way around. So, and it's made up of different glyphs and dags and checks. So you know that this is somebody's pet. There you can see the monumental chunk of resin that was the poor gate. So if we move it to one side, you also have the legs. Front and back for both sides. Want to get into those yet? I have a built one to show you. So you can see same sort of detailing and coming across the board, but still a very simple build. We have our head. So the head is two pieces. Nice detail, big hefty tonsil gives you something to aim at when it's roaring at you. I like the new nose, the almost. Um, skeleton like septum there on it and beady little eyes all aiming frontwards showing you that this is a predator this will not be surviving on mushlings and whatever greenery it can find unless that greenery is orcs and grots again nice detail in the skin and in the teeth so you can see holes appearing damaged chips reinforcements i suppose where Pian Boy has done a bit of a dentistry. Just fits together like that. So you can have him puppeting away. So that puts together the beast. Then we have the howdah, which is two pieces. Good solid construction. You'll have a bit of cleanup to do, but it's mostly on the beneath. As you can see, it locks together via that central piece. So the joins are hidden by the plates that construct the actual armor. Smiling headlights facing the front. And again, more of that gorgeous detail all the way around. You can see we've a cut out here to the front. That is to allow you to mount a weapon. So once that's gone together, you then drop your weapon into place. And there is a variety of weapons, as is Cromlex want. So we have a chassis here. Again, lovely detail around it, very crisp casting. And then we have these two cutout sections because you have a choice. 
you can have a zap gun for all you mech boys out there who feel like some form of energy pulse should always be being fired at your opponent. Nicely detailed, very, very crisp cast. There is a seam line running along the bottom there. You can just see parts of it on the top. So a bit of cleanup is required, but with all of these ridges, I would have expected possibly for any issues to pop up there. So they're mostly on the flat. Should be easy enough to clean. We also have a lobber when you need to obliterate whatever is coming your way. Nice big skull on the base. And last but by no means least, some form of cannon. And again, detailed, dagged, even the breach at the rear. So you don't need to glue any of these in, you can swap them in and out. This will hold the way they've been sculpted. Probably won't be able to show you this here. The way they've been sculpted, um, no, I won't. Means that you can just drop them in to the, uh, the housing. There's one final sprue, which are just some detail pieces. So some additional spikes made out of a piece of T-beam and welded on with a big wheel and with a couple of, could be door handles, could be levers. It's up to you. It's on Lucky Sprue 13. So, what does it look like built? It looks like a massive block of resin still. So it comes with a 170mm oval base. And as you can see, it is a brute. On top of the body, we have that howder. So if I just shift him to one side, You can see here, these um, additional spikes threw them on wherever I wanted on the armor. There's no set place. Just anywhere where you think somebody needs to be poked as they attempt to pick it up is a good place to do it. Bit of cleaning to get that to be a flush fit, but nothing particularly bad. I mean, running down it with a knife will do it. So there you can see the gun to the front and that gun just lifts out or drops in. And because of the way it's been sculpted with uh, these pieces on, there is a certain amount of weight to the rear, which will keep it aiming more or less upwards. So it may swivel slightly, but it's never gonna be dripping down and pointing at the, uh, the head of the beast. So you can just go ahead and swap those in and out. So as you can see, a bit more cleanup needed to be done here before it was painted, but I just wanted to get it together to show you guys how it looks. And I think it looks magnificent. Certainly very different from your standard orc battle wagon. All right there, folks. That's a brick of a miniature. Uh, if you can even call it a miniature. Absolutely gorgeous detail. I think it will be a really striking thing to put on the tabletop in place of an orc battle wagon uh, for your warlord. Give that real feral feel to your orcs for 40k. Plenty of options in there, but still really easy to build and should paint up a dream. Let me know what you think of the monstrous Nozilla below. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.